Dear Mama, birth is not just a matter of the body. It's a matter of the mind. We want you whole and we want you healed. That's what Black Maternal Health Week is all about, whole and healed Black mamas. We are proud Kendrick partners of Black Mama Matters Alliance, the founders and curators of Black Maternal Health Week. And we celebrate and uplift this year's theme, Building for Liberation, Centering Black Mamas, Black Families, and Black Systems of Care by taking a deep dive with our in-house mental health clinician and Oya priestess, Thea Monier, about the importance of decolonizing mental health within the Black family and discuss her mission to bring liberation and healing through her groundbreaking mental health initiative, The Blacker the Brain. And we'll also be dropping bonus content again in our Patreon community. Speaking of Patreon, here are four other ways to support us and help us continue to be Black Mama Built. Number one, don't just listen, subscribe, and leave a review. I've read those. I love them. I plan to post them on social media. Thank you so much. Number two, share this episode with at least one person you feel can benefit from listening. Number three, follow us and engage with us through social media comments, DM us, or email us at magic at dimblackmamas.com. Number four, get on the mothership, which is our newsletter that drops in your box twice a month. And number five, I said I have four, but I lied. I really got five. Make a contribution by purchasing merch or make a one-time donation. And if you're on our email list, you get a discount on merch and merch is going up. The price is going up in the month of May. So purchase your merch now and we'll have some new stuff dropping in June. So for those links and all the links mentioned in this episode, be sure to check out our show notes on our website at dimblackmamas.com. That's D-E-M blackmamas.com. When you invest in Dim Black Mamas, you're investing in a platform curated by three Black women actively cultivating spaces rooted in healing, creativity, and liberation for Black mamas. Now, let's get free, y'all, and jump into episode 42 of Dim Black Mamas. This is Dim Black Mama's podcast, the greatest podcast on earth. G Poe didn't forget Nikisha. I know you wished I was still I on it. Yep. I, in fact, when we get some new t shirts, I want that on there. I want hashtag G Poe on there. Greatest mm-hmm. podcast on earth. We have G Poe. G Poe. It's not, it's not as hard as you think it is. On earth. We you have know to that. claim that. We have I wouldn't to be a friend if I didn't tell you. If we walked around with G Poe on our shirt. We would look. I don't know if people would know what the fuck we're talking about. People didn't know. People didn't know what Jiho was. Is it going to spell it out? Um, I mean, but there's like more than three people wearing Jiho. It's a whole school. Can it say greatest podcast on earth and then underneath it hashtag? We can't do that. I'm open as long as it's on there. Okay, I'm open open to that. I'm open. I feel like we have to claim that best podcast. I didn't know who got the body means. I think sometimes y'all got a little southern privilege, and there be these terms that other people in Cali don't be knowing. I'm represent for the west side. We still catching up on who got the body. I mean, it's. I didn't know. Everybody didn't know that. I didn't know. I know, right? See, this is my point. Yeah, we're going to get into that a little bit later when we get to the mac and cheese segment about Ooh. certain sayings in oh. certain parts <laughs> <laughs> in certain regions of the Black community. We'll get into that then. But this is the greatest podcast on earth. I am Crystal Tennille Irby, mother of four. And I am Thea Monye, mother of three. And I am Nikisha Killings, mother of four. We'll move into our mac and cheese segment, which we're super excited about. We're going to be talking about (laughs) decolonizing Black mental health 
within the Black family. It'll be serious, but it'll also be very candid and very raw (laughs) about the ways in which Black folk Mm -hmm. talk about mental health and the language that we use. So we'll be doing that in our mac and cheese segment. So let's get into it. So before we jump into our mac and cheese, we're going to bring back, or I'm going to bring back, an oldie but a goodie to introduce our responsive reading. It's been so long. Been so long. I'm missing you, baby. Mm-hmm. I'm ushering her in. I'm the choir. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I like the good choir. <laughs> Hello, beloveds. Mm-hmm. Do 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 That little music in the background is hitting. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Like a little tambourine. That's what we've been needing. That's what we've been missing. I like that. That was that was. We did that. I did that with my mouth, y'all. We're going to start with a responsive reading from the dim black mama, black mama magic card deck y'all so we're yeah pull a card for yeah you each episode okay so the card that we pulled for today is i stand on my word mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so this is card number six if you're a numbers person this is card number six mm-hmm. it's in my know with six i don't know I don't well know. six well. six is six is the six if you do it with the six chakra it's about oh vision there we go we'll take it we'll take it we'll take that so dear mama let's work write three paragraphs about yourself don't overthink it allow it to flow organically do this step before reading the next one once you have your paragraphs choose the most significant paragraph of the three once you've found the most important paragraph underline the most important sentence in that paragraph. Once you've found this sentence, circle the word that holds the most power in that sentence. Mm, And it's their power. Mm. This is your word. Everything that flows from you stems from this word. It will guide you when the world feels confusing. It will offer clarity when you Mm. forget who you are or Mm. how important you are to this world. I stand on my word. And what we'll do is we'll put what the card um, for this episode is in the show notes. And we'll also put the paragraph on there. So that's so Oh, that's so good. That's a great one. Yeah, Yeah. that one's really good. Way to set the tone. And for information. Information as well as inspiration, visit our website dimblackmamas.com or follow us on all social media platforms at Dim Black Mamas Podcast. But if you don't want to miss any of the magic, join our email list, and the link is in the bio of all of our social media platforms, and it will be in our show notes. So we're going to move into our mac and cheese segment. And so this is a really special mac and cheese segment. Usually Thea facilitates our mac and cheese segment, but I will be facilitating the mac and cheese segment this time because it's kind of about her. It kind of is. Oh, what? It's in my zone. It's in my lane. Yeah, it's in your it's in your zone. It's in your zone. It's in your genius. We believe in rooting our motherhood in healing because healing is a part of our inheritance and a part of the generational wealth that we pass on to our children. And when I say that, what I mean is when we heal, we're not just healing for ourselves, we're healing for our ancestors and Mm -hmm. we're also healing for future generations, which makes Mm -hmm. the path clearer and smoother for them as they travel. And it gives them tangible tools that they can use along the way to elevate and to evolve in their being. So Mm -hmm. we believe that our culture is not rooted in pain or should not be rooted in pain, but our culture should be rooted in our our healing, our joy, our creativity, and our brilliance. We're going to have a conversation, a really candid and raw conversation. Here we go. About decolonizing yes mental health yes within the yes. black family okay so yes. Woo. so yes woo ready is right woo ready. Is right Nikisha so we're just gonna jump right in I feel okay. like you're coming in hot crystal I feel like you I mean I'm coming in hot I'm coming okay. in hot 10 years mm-hmm. ago how are you managing your mental health 
and motherhood as opposed to how you're managing it now? So 10 years ago, I had just gotten divorced. So I'd say I was managing it better than I was 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that phone call? Um, I, I think I had I had had a breakthrough 10 years ago. So I'll actually take a few steps back from 10 years ago for me because that's when I was deeper into what I didn't know about mental health and motherhood. At that point, I would say 12, 13 years ago, I was training to be a therapist, learning the clinical language and the clinical lenses that come with um, mental health. I was learning the language and I was learning the diagnostic tools and the techniques and the strategies. And my intention for this work was to help heal others. And it was not at all about you know, me or my own mm -hmm. healing. So it was an extension in many ways of codependent things that I had already picked up from childhood and early adulthood. So now it's not just about I'm in a relationship within my family and my home. It's about community and it's about the world. And so for me, it's a little complex because it was both my profession and motherhood is a title that I wore, but also it was something I was de definitely depressed without realizing that I was struggling with depression and anxiety and not having language for it because, and this is one of the first things we're, we'll talk about with this is that it's normalized and it can feel very normal for black people to be in struggle or in things that are hard. So we don't register that as a mental health situation mm -hmm. or a mental health experience. We are and high so for me. We are able to high function, functioning high, in it. High we are, we are high, we are functioning, high functioning within it mm -hmm. and anxiety. We are mm -hmm. high functioning in it in, in some ways, right? We're, we're high functioning to the world because we can still produce right. for you and we can mm -hmm. still show up for you. Right. But for ourselves, we are low functioning. Yes. We are not showing mm -hmm. up in our bodies. We are not showing mm -hmm. up in our health. Absolutely. We are not showing up in our relationships. And we are using alternatives, whether it be weed, or alcohol or sex or wine. food or wine. So many different things. Lethargy, just like tuning out. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of daydreaming and tuning out. I didn't think of any of that as coping for mm -hmm. mental health. And woof, to take it another layer, I thought as long as I had a smile on my face, my children's mental health was okay. Mm -hmm. I did not think about, I did not understand that they were witnessing this performance and making their own assertions and using their own wisdom and, and assuming that like they had no other sense of intuition mm -hmm. or self by which to actually really know what was going mm -hmm. on with me, right? Mm -hmm. And so my main coping during that time was my pet, was my dog Sabrina at the time. And so I think I had, I had it mixed up. During that time, I thought that mental health was about getting through things, looking strong, not breaking, not giving in, putting others before you, very similar to how I think I viewed motherhood mm -hmm. as well at that time. I think that's where I was at that time. So it's it was, different now. Yeah. So it was, sur it was survival and coping. It was survival coping and it was just do a little bit better than what you saw. Right. Mm -hmm. So in yeah. my home, it was like, keep the peace. Don't let it escalate to violence. Don't let it escalate to language, don't use substances, no infidelity. So as long as those things weren't present, I could say I was healthy because I was comparing it to something that was unhealthy. I didn't realize it was just another type of unhealthy mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. So many of us don't. That's an excellent mm -hmm. point. Now I cannot separate my mental health from my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And now I also am not being able to separate it from my wealth, which is the latest phase of it for me is that my mental health is tied to mm -hmm. my wealth and tied to my spirituality. I think the last decade for me, my thirties was about my spirituality and my mental health kind of aligning this decade. It's also about, and your wealth, right? Your ability to sustain an environment, an ecosystem, a lifestyle that breeds abundance, that breeds being able to give and share with others with ease and joy is a part of your mental health as well, as well as this spiritual journey that I've been on. So it's very, very different. The language of my kids, they don't just sound like therapist kids. They sound like priest kids. They use the moon as a part of their mental health strategy. They use stones. They use nature as a part of their healing and their mental health. You know, I, I teach them things like, we don't say we have depression. We say we're experiencing it. It's not something you own. There's no ownership because a lot of this generation says my depression, my anxiety. And I was like, you don't have to own everything. You can experience 
experience things. And that way you can, they can also be released and go on along their ways. I've never would have imagined having these conversations with my mom as a child. I think the language she used or didn't use was more just like what we would observe, right? Or I don't feel good. We would use a very physical language, a body language to try to express what was happening with us. I wish I had known or I wish even she had known that coloring the full story, you know, would have helped me understand so much more. But the thing about it is about mental health is it transfers non-verbally. Yes. So it's in the ecosystem. Yeah. And a lot of research is beginning around that epigenetics. So mm-hmm. recently they did the study on children whose parents were uh, in concentration camps mm-hmm. uh, and their parents never, ever talked to them about that experience at all. Mm -hmm. They knew that their parents had this experience, but they never discussed it. And epigenetics is that it doesn't change marker in your DNA, DNA. but mm-hmm. it puts yeah. a marker on marker. your DNA. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't talk to your children about what happened, it marks their DNA as well. So this daughter was yeah. like, you know, I, I always had anxiety and I didn't mm-hmm. know why, or this mm-hmm. fear of things being taken away from me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know why I had that. Sometimes I think we don't talk about it and we think we're shielding our children. Right. And sometimes right. we just don't have the language. Joy DeGruy talks about it in post-traumatic mm-hmm. slave mm-hmm. syndrome, mm-hmm. but it also works both ways, right? Mm-hmm. So I come from a lineage of people who have the gift of being intuitive. Yes, right, right. right. And no one ever told me that. I Mm -hmm. never, ever Mm -hmm. knew that. And so I feared the gift. I remember sitting in a car with Margaret Wilkinson Sexton when she came here Mm -hmm. and um, we were talking and and I said something about one of her family members. And she was like, how did you know that? And Mm -hmm. I like cringed up because that's not something that I wanted people to know about me. Because mm-hmm. I really didn't know how to handle it. And with Christianity, that's kind of... Right, right. Like, that's really yeah. the big thing. That's it really is. the big it thing. It is. And so those things work both ways. It's not just the trauma experiences that are it's in the, the ecosystem. Gifts. It's the gifts yes. as well that can help us through our mental health. I think for me, 10 years ago, I was deeply depressed and didn't Mm -hmm. know it. In fact, Mm -hmm. motherhood is what showed me that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was having suicidal ideations Mm -hmm. and did not know it. The passive one, people think like, I just want to sleep for a while, sleep forever. I want to sleep for a while. I just don't want to be here anymore. A truck is passing me on the highway. What would happen if this Mm -hmm. truck what would happen if I didn't mm-hmm. right now? Yeah. We don't call those things what they are. No, we do not. No, yeah, they're no. passive ideations. And was feeling motherhood was grimy as fuck to me. It wasn't what mm-hmm. they were showing on the gram, like taking a picture with your kid every two seconds. That was mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. my experience of motherhood at all. Mm. I was struggling in it because I had dreamed that my life would be this one way my entire life. And then when my father died, I lost all motivation Mm -hmm. to continue to pursue those dreams. So I was lost having suicidal ideations, felt very disconnected from my body, was actually resentful Mm -hmm. of my body and just deeply depressed and did not have the language at all to even know that I needed Mm. to be managing mental health. So I would say 10 years ago, I was not managing mental health and motherhood at all. You know what? It's not even just the language. It's the language, but it's also like, we're not afforded the human right to be depressed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're not afforded the human right to be anxious, right? The reason we don't have the language is because we can literally be crying over a child slain by the police on the news, on camera for all of America to see and people not empathize with us. Yeah, it's true. And I want to be really clear about that because that's why I feel strongly about decolonizing mental health and breaking down the things because how would we have built a system of wellness for us? For us, it would have looked so different because it would have been integrated with spirit and community. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it's been confusing for us to try to identify mental health, which is so external and clinical as a part of us. It doesn't look like how we would build wellness. If, If somebody in our village lost a child, we would encircle that and we would, it would be so many rituals and so much work and so much community around that spiritually and otherwise. 
food that you would be brought, all these things. We still do those things, but mental health would be in an internal experience for our community and for our families. It will be integrated. And yeah. so that's why we don't always think to it. We don't always jump yeah. to it because it doesn't look like ours. It looks like something we don't recognize. It looks, it looks like something we don't recognize. It yeah. looks foreign. Yeah. I would say the same, you know, 10 years ago, I was in a, a <laughs> in a place I'll tell you, um, I, I had two children, ages one and three in the moment, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, two and two, two and two. <laughs> it, it's something like that. I don't know. Two very small children and was rethinking what I look, what career work looked like and being a, a brand new wife and in the city I didn't know and didn't know anybody. It was a lonely, lonely lonely place oh god to I was so lonely I was um, so, so lonely. lonely so isolated oh god, I so and I lonely. and I, I I did not have suicidal ideation I had homicidal ideation if I'm being honest <laughs> it really just was like I'm I want to hurt somebody mm, mm-hmm, that's real mm-hmm. it is real and it, it, for me it, it was a particular type of struggle because you know I had a friend tell me one time girl when you commit you commit you all in so I I knew I, I was committed to marriage and committed to motherhood and committed to this this way of life this military spouse life you know there's no going back once I commit right. to a thing I'm in this thing right and so right, right, that right, also right. can be really really finite crystal don't give and me those finite eyes. Really finite, about. cause you know I, you know I'm the opposite. You jump shit, like, yeah. It now, can be but, really finite though, cause you don't give yeah. yourself yeah. any other choices mm-hmm. in that. I didn't have mm-hmm. words around this though, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, this is just my life, and I'm in this, and mm-hmm. this is the way it's gonna mm-hmm. go, and mm-hmm. I can't really see where the, where where it goes, but I'm in it, mm-hmm. you know, committed to this, and so that there's some trauma around that, and there's some trauma around. I think each of us wanting to parent differently than we were parented, mm-hmm. yeah, but not having the skills or knowing how that looks what to do about that. I remember sending you a text and I said, I said something about being resentful for motherhood and feeling like it hadn't added anything to my life. And I remember you saying, really? You feel like motherhood hasn't added anything? Because I was so resentful because I was seeing motherhood as this thing that was taking things away and that was shrinking me Mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. I know that's one of the reasons that I became a doula because I firmly believe Mm -hmm. had I had that doula in my life, that ritual Mm -hmm. that you're talking about, Thea, then Mm -hmm. I could have identified what was going on with me mentally earlier Mm -hmm. and come into motherhood in such a better space mentally Mm -hmm. instead of being resentful and having to work through that. Like what if I would have had a doula and I would have said, yeah, girl, I thought the other day I would be fine if a truck ran into my car. And it, and she's not, that's, she doesn't have to be like a mental health professional. She is, right. she is holding mental space. She's right. holding right. emotional space that yes. is integrated into the community, right. right? Right, right. Right, and so so this is the other thing, like, you know, through the rituals, through the initiation, the issues of worth mm-hmm. on. So how many of the things, when we think about decolonizing mental health that we're wrestling with, the Bible mm-hmm. says we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, mm-hmm. but against yeah. spirits and principalities. One of the things I've had to realize is the therapist is like, I have to be trained spiritually so that I can see which things that people are dealing with are not of this world. Right. So that piece about like ritual, how much ritual could be healing these mental health wounds, but we have cut mm. off access to okay. these ritual. I'm studying the history of, of healing and healing was initially done by priests, no matter your culture. You had priests in your Mm -hmm. culture. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about cultural priests, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those priests, because they were charged with healing, knew that they needed to know about the body and the mind. Hmm. Body, the herbs, the plants. Yep. So Mm -hmm. medicine grew out of spiritual practice. Spirituality. Mm -hmm. But what Mm -hmm. happens in Western culture is that we take things out of context Mm -hmm. because capitalism forces us to. We separate them out. We segregate them out. I just Mm -hmm. need this so that I can sell it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a perfect example for me. So intuitively, intuitively, I wanted to have RJ at home. I didn't know nothing about home births. I thought a doctor would come and do it. I was like, "Why? what? A doctor won't come to your house and deliver your baby? Why not? Like that was crazy to me. But intuitively, that's what I wanted. Yeah. I was talked out of that decision, not out of malice, but mostly out of fear. So I came home and my grandmother gave me a wrap and she gave me a girdle. And I was like, I'm not putting this on. 
And it's like, I'm not worried about my waist right now. You know, I'm still mad I had to have a C-section. Oh, the only thing she could tell me was you need it for support. And I didn't understand it. So in the meantime, I'm growing disconnected from my body, which is a mental trip. Yeah. It's affecting mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. mentality. Here mm-hmm. I am now, 11 years later, working with the belly therapist mm-hmm. who has me wrapping my, my belly every single day, basically to close- To offer that support. To offer that support. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, is we see waist trainers on Instagram. Yes, yes, we do. And so we tie that to diet culture. Right. But it really is- They pieced out a part of our ancestors. They teased out the part that was was profitable. A very important ritual that could help someone Mm -hmm. giving birth Mm -hmm. reconnect with their body and once you make that reconnecting with with their body your mental clarity Mm -hmm. and your mental Mm -hmm. state completely completely shifts yeah and a priest would have known that right yes not even just from their own spiritual observation but because they're members of a community of a village so they would have known talking to the other people in the village the other mothers people who experience things that, oh, this is occurring. Multiple people are experiencing this. This is something that we can do. Mm -hmm. This is why when we talk about decolonizing mental health, one of the things I always stress is it's not a mental health issue if I move you to a new environment and you no longer feel anxious or depressed. Perfect example. (laughs) If you go on vacation Mm -hmm. and you now feel relaxed and depressed, the issue is not in you. The -hmm. issue is in the environment. Mm -hmm. The the issue is also in how you perceive the environment, Mm -hmm. how it's set up, who is in the environment, right? But the way Western culture views mental health is you are the thing. Mm -hmm. It is you because it Mm -hmm. never wants to take accountability for the environment it's created that is making people sick actively, right? Because 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 capitalism, white supremacy, right? right? I know our episodes aren't about capitalism. I know they are. But 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 that's what it comes down to. And so so that's why I think like, part of the black or the brain, the project that I lead, the reason it's interdisciplinary is because everything is mental health, which means that if we just make a healthier environment, the Mm -hmm. mental health issues go away. And this is my issue with mental health. It's only a thing because of the thing you created. It's only a thing Ah. because of the society you created. Now that's not to say we couldn't be in a village and somebody feels sad or they're grieving or they're struggling. Like, but what would happen is there would be a ritual, spiritual, and communal response to that that would not be need a separate designation called mental health. Right. This, this thing that we're talking about is the result of not just capitalism, but colonialism, like white, mm-hmm. yes, white war, plan. white Absolutely. war. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's the oh. birth of white violence. That is what birthed the need for this mental health system. But if you think about prior to that, You know, it wasn't that people were ignoring their problems or not dealing with their traumas. It's that as things were happening, they they were living within nature with Mm -hmm. the rituals and with the community support they needed to move through it. So it wasn't it wasn't what it is right now. And we can't talk about the system without thinking about it that way. You're absolutely right that it's a result of colonization because black African women created C-sections. Right. Mm -hmm. They taught white doctors how to do it, but white doctors couldn't figure out how they had such a low mortality rate, mortality rate, the the African women, because it was ritual. It wasn't. It was a whole thing around it. And when I tell you the number that C-sections can do on you mentally. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. we Yeah. Both of us Mm -hmm. are examples of that. Yeah. 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 And so some of the pushback I've gotten, because I'm definitely on the more radical end of this, is like, well, we're here now. We're dealing with it now. And so we need this mental health system to deal with what's here now. And I'm like, we will always need it then unless we change the fucking environment. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be in mental health and not be advocating for the change in a society or else you're really not asking Mm -hmm. for your client to get better. You're asking for your client to continue to cope. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to get better, you haven't changed. You know, it's an environmental issue. You all were there when I went to Panama and I was like, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. So it's not me. It's not me. Mm-hmm. And now how many of us are walking around thinking it's us? Mm-hmm. All of us. Right. And so where the trauma does come in is the repeated trauma. What does end up happening, which is real and which we would have to probably create new ritual around is because this wasn't a thing the same way before is 
the compounded trauma over and over and over and over again to our brains and our bodies has created the need for new ritual that that is an enhancement that includes previous ritual but expands on it right so in other words the solution isn't their system the solution is to upgrade ours. So my question to you with that is, what role do you think Black mothers play in that? I think Black mothers are frontline. They're the therapists of the family, right? They're frontline workers, of course. They're also the emotional tenor of the space, right? So what we don't, when we don't take care of our mothers and our mothers don't take care of themselves, despite all of our efforts to raise a healthy family, what's going to happen, right? because they really are a reflection of, of who we are. Perfect example is when I started centering joy for myself, with myself in my life, I was less preoccupied with whether or not the other people in my home were joyful because I knew it was their choice to be joyful or not. I knew I could provide the most amazing home possible. But if they decided they didn't want to be joyful about that, there was nothing I could do, right? But what it started to do was make everyone ask themselves the question of what brings me joy. Mm-hmm. And so now I look around To be honest, COVID has made me a better parent because I was still in the rat race. I was still working, even knowing mental health, I was still practicing it a white way because that's what I had time for. The quick grab Ah. skill set, the quick grab technique, but not the like relationship building, not the sitting in and of it, right? Just the problem solving of it. I would not change this time with my family because I just feel like. I get them and I see them in such a different way. What did COVID do? It decolonized things. Yes. Right? Um, And so part of the reason we're saying, oh, I feel more present with my family because we never would have set up a life where we were away from the people we cared about 10, 12 hours a day in traffic, in these other buildings with no windows and no breaks and no, we never would have set up that kind of lifestyle. And so now many of us are thriving because our lives have been decolonized and we are living a different way, a way that is more aligned with how we would have built it. Even in the midst of the financial struggles, you know, the stressors around driving, timing, performance, and all these different things are less. And the time with people we care about, we're getting more real. We're getting to the real healing. Listen, these are things that needed to be healed a long time ago. People are separating who needed to be separated a long time ago. People are uh, it's true. To tell their kids for the first time ever. People are dealing with their underlying health issues because they didn't have the time because capitalism doesn't allow for time. So Thea, you talked, you talked about, you know, black mothers being sort of the front line, mm-hmm. the front line people, they are the therapists of the family. So mm-hmm. what toll does that mm-hmm. take on Black mothers? And I think a better question is, how do Black mothers balance that? You know what I mean? Like being the therapist of the family, but also take care of ourselves. I remember, you know, I was all for therapy. I told everybody else they should go. Like, yes, go to yeah. therapy. Yes, yes, family therapy. Yes, you should go to therapy. You should go to therapy. But for myself, I felt like, uh, I don't know. I think I'm too broken. I don't think mm-hmm. therapy is mm-hmm. going to You say you didn't think it was going to work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I didn't think it was going to work for me. And let's be specific. In order for it to work for us, we have to find us. We have to that go to true. us, right? Yeah. Like for it to really work. I mean, you can, no doubt, I have non-Black therapists that I know who could do amazing work with people for sure. And for the layers of the kind of healing that we need, at some point, you're going to need to connect to one of us for that deeper ancestral healing. And what I found was I wasn't alone in that. Talking to family members and friends, Black women, they, other Black women felt like that. I was like, wow, I thought I was the only one who felt like that. The first thing I would say is we need to make a shift from thinking of ourselves as strong to thinking of ourselves as powerful. Oh, Oh, that's good. Can I talk about it? Can I talk about it? Yeah. Can I talk about shedding the strong black woman? Yeah. Can we talk about it, people? It is literally killing us. Black Mm. don't crack, but we die young. And you know what it is? It's a savior complex. We think only white people have savior complexes, but the strong black woman trope is a savior complex. We feel we are the only ones who can do it and get it right. And if we don't do it, ain't nobody else going to do it. So we got to be the ones to do it, to do everything, to take on everything, to stand up for everybody at the expense of ourselves. And when we choose to be powerful, 
we choose when and where and to whom we want to lend our strength. We also Mm -hmm. give ourselves the option to be vulnerable, Mm -hmm. to be cared for, Mm -hmm. to express what we don't know, to express what we need and to allow other people to show up for us. I love that. So, whoo, okay, stay with me. Here we go. I'm with you. Strong. We've attached to that identity because it's the only Mm -hmm. positive trope that Mm -hmm. has been offered to us, right? So true. It also makes us feel needed, which has also been the only way we've been validated and valued is if we are needed, right? So our identity here in this experience has been rooted in being needed and being strong. And there is a huge Uh. fear of letting that go because mm-hmm. then then that loneliness you both talked about, that yes. otherness, yeah. that that abandonment, that feeling of who will care for me, who will be there, kicks in. And it's a very it's a very strong protective survival mechanism, right? And so when we talk about shifting from strong to powerful, powerful is a source. You you are a source that is sourced by God, right? So David was strong when he killed Mm -hmm. Goliath, right? But it took the connecting to God to become powerful. Mm -hmm. And so Black women are actually, here we go, the God of the household, right? They are born with their Godhood. They are born with their priestesshood. They are born with it, right? But it doesn't get activated because there's no ritual Mm. to support it and there's no initiation and there's no none of these things that would really activate that godhood in them right so we should be the source of power and the source of power never runs out of power it doesn't have to do anything but be plugged Mm -hmm. into right so us just existing in a home would sustain a home It wouldn't be about if we are doing X, Y, or Z, Mm -hmm. right? The strength piece is about how much can you do? But Mm -hmm. the power piece is about my only job here is to stay connected to source. And that way I can kind of help filter this power through this household and through this community. The mental shift for me was that my mindset is not something that I navigate. Mm. My mindset is something that I curate. So therapy for me now is not about going to someone to help me find a solution or to fix who I am. Therapy for me now is about someone helping me tap into myself, to unblock things, to open me up. To show things, to be a mirror. To show things, to be be a mirror to me. And co-create healing. Right. And so that, that shift helped me realize, oh, maybe you're not broken. No. Oh, you just yes. haven't uncovered your wholeness. What you tapped That's all into, you gotta do. What you tapped into though, the same barrier to me. Is that a meme? Is that a t-shirt? A meme. A the, meme. The, the same barrier to our mental health is the same barrier that we have to our spiritual health, which is that we don't believe we can be Mm. divine. We say, I ain't Jesus. And we are. Well, we've been, right? we've been taught. Right, we've been taught that, that right? Emphatically, like that is sacrilegious. When you think about that, how that, when you think about the impact upset. of that on mental health, they're gonna be mad today. Gonna be upset. We need a saint. We need like a tambourine <laughs> that gives like a saint. Like, watch out, saints. Think we'll about though who benefits from that. Like, I mean, right. let me just you know, I've done this before, but and this, this, I promise y'all, this ties into mental health. First of all, it is illogical to believe God sent a son in divinity himself wrapped in flesh to teach us the way so that we could say, we can't do that. That is illogical. What is the purpose of sending someone to teach you something that you can't do? I'm just trying to get us really clear, right? Even when Jesus said you would do greater works than these, we call Jesus a teacher. Hmm. What teacher, what math teacher is here spending their day, time and energy teaching kids math under the assumption that they can't do the math, that they that they will that right. they should never master how to do the math, right? That, that they makes should stay in that no class sense. learning forever. That makes Ever. no sense, right? And so, the, but my point to that is that is illogical, right? Right. What is more logical yeah. is that yeah. if you are of the Christian faith and you believe God sent His Son, the story is about 
him saving you from your sins. But I could have done that the first day I got here. Why spend 33 years on this earth? Is to teach you how to walk as divinity in flesh. That is what I'm here to teach you, right? So not tapping into that is a mental health issue, goddammit. It is a mental health issue because until then, you will always see yourself as someone powerless and lacking. And that is 90% yeah. of the mental health issues we see. It is. It's by design, though, sis, right? It's completely not, by this design. This is not an accident. Yeah, because they saw our power, right? And had to, to figure out a way to diminish it. This was the, the, the vehicle through which our power was diminished, or at least we were we, we were taught that we, we didn't have what we had. Gaslit, gaslit. For hundreds of years. And if, if they didn't, because they didn't have the rituals and the ancestry and the ashe to do it themselves. The connection. The connection. The, the goal was to make you forget you could do it. This is why right. our mental health has to look different than white mental health. It has to be structured different. We haven't created it yet. We're creating it now. We don't have a mental health. We use their mental health. Mm -hmm. And like anything else, that system does not work for us. Let me tell you, it works to get you back to work. Oh. It works. It'll get you coping It'll get you producing. It'll get you back to work. It'll get you back to them student loans. But it it'll, won't have you. It expanding. will not have you walking in your divinity. And this is why joy is my medicine. Joy is my metric. Joy is my sword. Because when we get Black people to tap into joy, it has this way of recalling mm. and hearkening a remembrance of what we're actually entitled to. And then you want to cultivate a life that makes sure you never forget again. And that means reevaluating tools, reevaluating systems, reevaluating the definitions of words, reevaluating mm -hmm. your reaction to words. Tapping into the joy piece for me, because Black people are so used to survival, it's almost like joy is so expansive. And so what we run into is an issue of joy can kickstart a Black healing process that is about more than just surviving. It is about the pathway back to our own divinity, which is why it has to have a spiritual component. That's what creativity is for me. Absolutely it is. For us, for us. I mean, we are happiest when we are creating, when we are moving, when we are, are connecting. Well, think about if, if everyone felt free to be exactly who they are, how much of your anxiety comes from external expectations. I've been doing more meditating. I have to do more meditating now as an initiate, right? So I realized that the first layer of thoughts were very self-critical. You're not doing this mm -hmm. right. This is the way you're supposed to meditate. This is what they say about meditation. This is what they say you should be doing. These are the te techniques they say. Who are they? My first layer of thoughts were all about what other people have said about meditation. Yet here I am every day meditating, not open to the idea that it may look yeah. different than how other people meditate, right? This mm -hmm. may be how Thea meditates. This may be what it looks like. I didn't realize that that is going on in the back of my head constantly when I'm doing everything is you're not doing that right. You should be doing it this way, right? The second layer of thoughts was about work, productivity, right? Oh, I got to remember to do this. I got to remember to take care of this. Did I email this person? The third layer was, it was all other people. I'm still, after doing this meditation practice ongoingly, still trying to get to the layer where it's just me, right? <laughs> so when we talk about Black women and Black mothers, we have to get to the through those layers to get to the just us part. We have to say, yeah. my mothering is going to look different. I mean, that's one thing I appreciate about Jada Pinkett. It's like she accepted that her mother mothering was going to look different. You know, it was unapologetic that, you about know, it. Yeah, And, you know, and there was, I'm sure there was some crunchy moments. When the press was covering her kids in all these different ways. Oh, they still are. Yeah, there were some crunchy moments for her. Like when Jaden went to the prom in the Batman suit yeah. and the parents called them yeah. and she told the girl, don't go to the prom with him. Right, right. Don't go with him. She said, people think that this is easy for her and right. real, but mm -hmm. it's a mental shift for yeah. them as yeah. well. But it first looks like allowing our, our motherhood, our personhood, to look differently than anybody else. I could not walk as Oya. I could not take the name Oya Bumi Nishegun if I did not accept that I'm going to look and be different than anybody else out there in the world. I don't care if we're talking about the same thing. I don't care if we came from the same places. And that has to be 100% okay with me. To me, Black motherhood, Black mental health begins with liberating yourself to explore who am I when I'm not 
thinking about what other people mm-hmm. are saying or want mm-hmm. me to be. What comes to me very naturally, even down to what time of day do I feel naturally more happy? Well, that feels scary, Thea. It feels scary. Who mm-hmm. am I when I'm not thinking about what other people need me mm-hmm. to be for them or need me to do for them? That you feel Ooh. there's a part of you that says nobody. Right. There's a part of you that says, what am I if not right. meeting the needs of others? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You're no, afraid to kind of go that far. Absolutely. And it's in that nothingness that you will begin to find something else. Yes. Yeah. I think I think we've tapped into something here. And I think I just got set free. I think that when you all talk about like what other people think and all those things, I think that oh. that is not, not an, an issue Aries for, issue. It's not an issue oh, for me. Okay. I think I battle with myself. I think that that is... I think that's, you know, the therapy that I need, the battle within, you know what I mean? Well, what about when you're doing like, say you're working on something for DBM Mm -hmm. and you want it to be like, perfect. Are you, do you think about, oh, I don't want people to get this and they feel cheated or they feel like it's not good enough. Does that come up? No. That's squint. My God. I'm going to (laughs) What, what, what comes up is, this is how Crystal get down. We come out pristine. But I, but I think somewhere in it, it's like, okay, so what is the hold to that? So well, somewhere. So for you, maybe yeah, then it's what it is. It's, yeah. it's still an inner critic though. Yeah, it's still an it's inner still critic. very much inner sure. critic. And it's still very much like, not just like trusting what will flow through you. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Because we've been colonized not to trust, but that even goes back to the suicidal thoughts. It's yeah. like, am I really thinking this? <laughs> is this really a dangerous thought. Like I don't even trust, right. I don't even trust myself to go get help Ooh. for the thoughts that could harm me, which that right? ties into motherhood too, yeah. because what do they cut? They cut into the second and the third, mm-hmm. right? The sacral, which is our sense of creativity, Girl, and they our desire. It, they burn it right now. Like, and what is that? Right. 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 So like they, they cut into the, the second and the third. So that second is creativity, joy, pleasure, desire, all the things that you're entitled to that are about in, in, in those areas. But then your third is my sense of self, which, which sits on yep. what do I desire? What do I want? Ooh. What makes me happy? So when you slice through that area and you don't have the ritual or the, 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 the lineage or the ashe or the authorities to know what to do with that area on a mm. woman, you do so much damage. I mean, it is, it's not just putting your organs back in place. It's putting your whole sense of self, your identity and your rights back in place. Ooh, ooh. I have diastasis recti. So, which means my tissue, my muscles have been spread apart. And those are the muscles that cover your organs. Um, it's not about how big or small or how flat around your tummy is. It's really not. It's about where those muscles are, right? And literally when those muscles are spread apart to the extent that mine were, I'm literally walking around with my guts hanging out. When she said that to me, I said, that's literally how I feel mentally. I feel exposed, unsupported, exposed, mm-hmm. vulnerable, unsupported mm-hmm. Vu- and vulnerable is okay, but vulnerable, Exploit, uh, exploitable, like, like you can exploitable. be easily exploited. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. That's, it. that's exactly in harm's how way. I feel. Yes, unprotected. That is exactly Mm -hmm. all of the mental feelings Mm -hmm. that I have been having. And energetic too. mm -hmm. Because that work wasn't done. Mm -hmm. Right. That repair work wasn't done. That's my point. My point is like when we talk about Black mental health, it's not this one thing. Yeah. Right. It's how our bodies have been handled. It's how our diets are handled. It's how our thoughts and feelings are handled. It's how our communities are set up. It's how our homes are set up. It's everything. I can't point to it and say, because we never would have. We would have just said, let's create an ecosystem Mm. where everyone is valued and supported. We would have just said, let's create an environment, an ecosystem that works with nature, that works with spirit, and that works with us. Okay. So language is a huge part of why I think that mental health is such a, I don't think it's a taboo subject in our culture. I don't think it's taboo. I think we do mental health in different ways, but it's definitely looked at as a weakness per se, if you feel like you need to seek mental health help, right? 
And when I'm talking about the language, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm just going to keep it real. As many of you know, my grandmother had COVID and she was in the hospital and she was having, you know, breathing issues that they thought were related to COVID. Well, my mom goes, you know, mama has panic attacks. You know, she just might be having a panic attack because, you know, she's in the hospital. She's by herself. She's worried about COVID. And I was like, grandma has panic attacks. I had panic attacks when I was pregnant. I didn't know she had panic attacks. And my mom goes, yeah, you know, she got bad nerves. You know, I told you she had bad nerves. And I thought when my mother told me years ago that my grandmother had bad nerves, I thought neurologically, physical. like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. physical, like her nerves are bad, like sensations, mm -hmm. sensations are bad, mm. not anxiety. I like black people's terms for mental health. I don't like bad nerves. I, I don't like, I like it. bad nerves. I That's like it. I, I can see how that one could, could lead someone astray. I, I think, I get that. Yes. I think, well, here's what I feel. If the mental health field wants to truly be inclusive, okay, then they need to be trained on how to ask us the right kinds of questions to get the right kind of answers, right? Like <laughs> the reason she would have to say anxiety is because she's interacting with a white system. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? But this for years, truth. your mom knew what your grandma was talking about. Yeah, the, the confusion wasn't with them. I was confused. Well, that was her business. Maybe she them. just didn't want to tell you her business. I will also <laughs> say, this is not unique Listen. to Black folks. I want to be clear about this. This is in the Asian community. This is in the Latino community. This is not a Black thing. Because none of those cultures would have designed mental health this way. Yeah, I hear true. you. It's true. And I guess, I guess so part of my thing is like, because they'll say this in studies, you know, that there's a stigma and all these different, and I'm like, that is putting that on the populations. You created a system rooted in rich whiteness. Hmm. We think about hmm. the, the fathers of psychotherapy. Yes. Rich whiteness. Has, when they hear the terms, I'm going to tell you what these people think. I'm going to tell you what all the people think across the board, people call it, oh, white people have anxiety. White people have depression. And they think that because white people created the terms and white people created the system. We mm. would need a language and we haven't cultivated one yet. That sounds all like saying. us. That's we do all need saying. one. We do That's need one. Saying. I don't think we should call anxiety in the black community bad nerves because it puts a negative connotation on right. someone. I get that. Who is uh, we shouldn't with call that. people crazy. Here's what I said I think we should find non judgmental terms. For instance, I agree. We call yes. menstrual cycles Aunt Flo. Right. Everybody know yes. who Aunt Flo is. And it's yeah. not right. Negative. There's no judgment on her. Right. It's true. Right. So maybe she got we many, call... many names. She has many names. She's many but names. We know what they all mean. But we know what they mean. Yeah. Words mean things, right? Words yeah. mean things. And so when we don't have a language about these things that is reflective of how important it is that we seek support for these things, then I don't think we'll seek support. No one wants to be known as the person with bad nerves. You know, girl, don't get around her. She can't, you know, she can't take much. You know, she got bad nerves. You see what I'm saying? Oh, my nerves are shot today. I know exactly what that means. <laughs> Listen, nerves the are shot. part of it is also that like our terms are, are more- today. <laughs> I know exactly what that the means. Nerves are shot. My nerves are shot. My nerves are shot. Mine are shot on the regular. I'll tell you another one. I'll tell you another one. They're going to drive me to drink. I know what that means. I know what that means. They're going to drive me to drink. She goes but my by many point names. to you, Crystal, is that mm -hmm. they're comfortable using their terms. They can use them. I don't think they should have to always rely on those terms. I'm going to tell you why. This is my other thing. Because we are clinically trained to when we hear those terms, we lock in. And we get very narrow in our diagnosis and specific. And then we don't mm -hmm. look at that person's whole experience. So if you have a black person walking and say, I'm having anxiety. They're going to circle in on that, but they're not going to think about all these things that mm -hmm. contribute to that. This is how I talk to my clients. I say, listen, depression and anxiety are like cousins. Okay. They real close. They kick it together all the time. And so you never really find one somewhere where you, all, you don't find the other. The trick is to figure out who's the big cousin and who's the little cousin. And, but I feel like if you talk to Black people about mental health in that way, mm -hmm. using that language, then that is relatable and you're still using the terms depression it and is, anxiety. But, but how many of those Black people are going to encounter me? 
this is the problem. Well, that's why we so have. It, yeah, but we, it's not. Day. I mean, I'm a, I'm trying. I'm building an army. Right. But, well, I would say this is but the way. average person listening is going to have to walk into a place with a person who has not been trained in decolonized therapy. And when they hear clinical terms from their client, they're going to narrow in on that experience. In the meantime, Black people, it's the mental health professional's job to learn your whole story. And to me, this yes. makes them learn your True whole story. story. If you go in there saying, I have anxiety, they're, they're not gonna do the work of like learning about the whole being. They're gonna hone like, in on okay, that one word and they're do. done. This is what we're gonna do, yeah. we're gonna work. Because just like you were saying about the pregnancy and the birth work, we got this many hours, we got this many sessions covered by your insurance and this is what we gotta get done in this amount of time. I would tell you this, clinicians get kind of frustrated with black people because a lot of times they come in and they don't have the language. This is another key. Mm. They don't. And I have to explain to people when I teach them in trainings that your average black person did not grow up hearing mental health terms. And you will have to do some work to build rapport so they can trust you with their story. And in the story is the thing that you're looking for to give them what they need. But you got to do the work of being willing to be there, be present, hold the story and be patient. Average black girl, average black client, if I see 22 year old black woman coming in for therapy, how you doing? Fine. You ain't fine. How you doing? I'm good. You're not good, right? But that's what they're going to say. And they may say that for multiple sessions because they don't have the emotional language, right? For me, I think that had I known that when I was pregnant, like had I known that that was a part of my family history then again it just well, you know what i'm about to solve that you know how i'm about to solve that for every black person listening Ooh. there wow. is a history of anxiety and depression in your family <laughs> as well as trauma you don't have to ask your granny don't have to tell you your great grandfather have to tell you it's they were true. enslaved and they were uh, oppressed for many years and yes they all have it there's probably alcoholism oh. there's probably we all got it there's probably yeah. been domestic violence it is in the family and no one should have to tell you that shit because you have read and seen I'm groups. not going to say every black person has Listen, had domestic violence if you and came alcoholism. through the transatlantic slave trade. That's all if I'm you came through the transatlantic slave trade. I'm is diagnosis. I am doing a blanket diagnosis I'm, for black I, people I, I will... who are descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. Yes, there is a history. Assume there is a history and move forward. Onward. I will assume. <laughs> Onward. There is a history of anxiety and trauma. I will not co-sign alcoholism. I okay, he doesn't co-sign, co-sign alcoholism. But depression? Depression, anxiety, I co-sign. You don't think nobody drink no moonshine and no hooch to get through the day? That doesn't mean that they ain't alcoholic. Well, there you go. That's Nobody's another black thing. <laughs> That's another black thing. He liked to drink. I wouldn't say he's an alcoholic, but he liked to drink. He liked to drink. He liked the drink. Hey, we have to wrap up this because I have so much editing to do on this episode. <laughs> Um, can we talk about Black of the Brain? Can you tell us about yeah, Black of okay, the Brain? Okay, so, so, <laughs> okay, so the Black of the it's Brain, so you will get more of this. The Black of the Brain is, I'm really excited this year. We're really, really going full and we have a cohort, but with the cohort are, you know, people from education, mental health, the healthcare professions, uh, doulas, birth work, you name it, just all kinds of folks. And we are doing exactly what we're talking about. We are reintegrating, reclaiming mental health as an integrated part of our lives and our environments. And we are demanding that it be just normalized, not the system of mental health, but that our well-being be normalized in everyday life encounter and everyday systems, that joy be the baseline for all forms of interaction and treatment in all systems across the country, because we believe that is truly decolonizing mental health and that will truly deal with the issue. And so we have lectures. We will also have a model IO library where the lectures will be able to be accessed for, and we'll have an annual pass and you'll get guided meditations, poems related to these subjects. There's different ways to contribute. Like right now on Patreon, if you just want to donate $9 Mm -hmm. to the campaign to keep us moving, to keep us sustainable, that's awesome. But definitely follow the Black or the Brain on Instagram for more information. And what do you all do in the cohort? The cohort, um, I love. So the cohort, what's included for them is they get access to all lectures. They also get access to the um, material because we are in the process of developing strategies. So we have a group that's focused on documentation, mentorship program or creating a program for grad to, to uh, decolonize grad students. 
When you um, say documentation, talk a little bit more yeah, about that. Intake forms, all the because those because intake forms, when you go to the doctor and fill that stuff out, it's it's colonized. I would it's love really is. I, I one of our goals is to have intake forms say, have you or are you currently experiencing a form of systemic racism or oppression? Mm-hmm. Ooh. I would we're trying to have that on intake forms for doctors mm-hmm. for therapists for everything so that's an example we also have a team that's working on like content that we want to put out in the world just to keep the campaign going tidbits and things like that and mentorship and so then we have these heart sessions where i bring in and so we have people coming on talking about decolonizing business decolonizing education decolonizing the family a variety of topics and so those kind of exclusive like one-on-one intimate settings happen in the cohort as well as support and development we're hoping the cohort also leads to a directory where you will be able to find a decolonized therapist through the cohort and will lead to being able to get cohort members presentation, like chances to be out in the world and present and to be on policy committees and things like that. So there's a there's a longer vision for it as well. Yeah, and that intake piece is like so important because one of the biggest tests that people have adolescents take and some adults take is ACEs. Mm-hmm. And ACEs like gives an assessment of all the trauma mm-hmm. that you've been through and there's nothing on there about, about race, race or systemic right. and institutional oppression. And it, you know, it's crazy. There's that not that's a diagnosis not, it's not crazy. for racism it's or experiencing racism. And I think there should be a diagnosis if you are harboring racial animus that should yeah. be on your Ooh. mental health file. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's real. It's real. Yeah. Okay. So you can follow at the black or the brain mm-hmm. on Instagram and we'll have all of those other links in our show notes. Yeah, that was great. That's a great segment. Great segment. Now that was definitely not your mama's or your mama's mama's mental health conversation, but we appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much for rocking with us. Thank you so much for listening and thinking and willing to be stretched and challenged so we can move towards liberation. Be sure to follow The Black or the Brain on Instagram and check out the cohort at theamonier.com. Those links and any other links mentioned in this episode will be in our show notes on our website at dimblackmamas.com. That's D-E-M blackmamas.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. And remember to check out our Patreon community for bonus content from this episode at patreon.com forward slash dim black mamas the mothership takes off again on sunday may 1st now that's got to be a good episode because it's dropping on a sunday anyway until then we wish you joy and expansion stay tuned for nikisha's word we promise it's on its way namaste black people